Most hardcore Star Trek fans know that not only did the Federation refit and upgrade their ships regularly, so did the Klingons. As covered in a previous video, the Klingon D7 battlecruiser as seen in the original series were never quite a match for the Enterprise or the Constitution class. It seemed that at the time there was no known Klingon ship that the Constitution class heavy cruiser would fear in a one-on-one -on -one situation without some kind of handicap. But by the time of Star Trek The Motion Picture, when the Enterprise was undergoing a major refit, the Klingons would already be fielding an upgraded battlecruiser of their own known as the Katinga class. Let's get some background about the various types of lore. As with all things in Star Trek, the canon about what is a D7 versus a Katinga and other ships is murky as hell, and as new iterations of Star Trek come out, the situation becomes worse, which will drive the obsessive Star Trek ship nerd insane. The Klingon ships on screen in the original series are designated D7 battlecruisers, as seen in this technical readout. The Enterprise defeats at least one that we know of. We never see them firing anything other than disruptors, so we never saw torpedoes. That is not to say that the Klingons did not have torpedoes, or even that this particular ship did not have torpedoes. But a lot of games and lore between the original series up to the time of uh, Star Trek Enterprise more or less agreed that the D7s did not get torpedoes until the Katinga refit. And these three ships seen in Star Trek The Motion Picture were the first time we saw a Klingon ship on the big screen in breathtaking detail. There are many subtle structural differences between this Klingon cruiser and the D7s shown in the original series, and for the first time we saw Klingon ships firing torpedoes. These ships were called Katinga class battlecruisers. Now technically the Katingas could still be D7s, in a similar way the Enterprise refit was still called a Constitution class, although some game lore reclasses these new ships as Enterprise class based on the Enterprise refit. The Katinga could very well be a D7 variant, one of many. The original D7s could have been, say, an A variant, and these particular D7s could be a variant with any letter of the alphabet. Most casual fans' understanding of the Katinga is that it has a cloaking device unlike the older D7s. And a lot of books, technical manuals, and lore go along with this. They certainly have some kind of cloak into the TNG era, just like most Klingon warships. However, you have to remember that the idea of the Klingons cloaking was not a thing at all until Star Trek III The Search for Spock. So until that time there was no lore where even this particular Katinga, even as we see them in Star Trek The Motion Picture, even has a cloaking device. Now we can say later that the Katinga certainly has a cloak, but it would be pretty new tech for the Klingons as they would acquire them from the Romulans and Klingon cloaking is not nearly as sophisticated as Romulans. For our scenario, and for the sake of comparison to the pre-refit Constitution class, let's establish the Katinga has better and improved disruptors compared to the older D7 variants. The heavy ones are moved from the nacelles to the underside of the hull, it has forward and aft torpedoes, and it has an early Klingon cloaking device. This cloak is almost certainly imperfect. The faster the ship moves, the more likely it has some kind of detectable emissions in the form of plasma or radiation, and is probably not very efficient, so weapons and shields would likely be unpowered while this cloak is engaged. The hull is going to be reinforced compared to the old D7s to compensate for possible hits while cloaked, and since shields would not be useful while cloaked, some kind of enhanced armor will be cherished protection, and I believe this ship will have a vastly improved power plant, so that when it is able to fight uncloaked, it can power everything and still be able to maneuver well. In comparison, we have the Constitution class, and rather than disruptors, it has phasers. Phasers are really just an over-engineered disruptor that uses very dynamic particles, giving the weapon a lot more flexibility and adaptability than a disruptor. It has photon torpedoes that almost certainly fire forward in volleys of two, and in the original series at least, we only see them fire from a forward torpedo bay. Um, in the Enterprise episode, A Mirror Darkly, which is when Star Trek really began to make many cannon-breaking mistakes, we see the Defiant firing spreads of blue torpedoes, and even aft torpedoes. I mean, this does look cool, but it really is inconsistent with anything we've ever seen in the original series, or even in the original movies. I hate to do this, and some of you nerds won't like it, because it was maybe the best episode in Star Trek Enterprise, but I'm going to dismiss the behavior of the Defiant in that episode. 
The Constitution class armament that makes sense is forward firing torpedoes only, as there isn't really much of a location for aft firing torpedoes, and they fire in volleys of two. The phasers on this Enterprise, guys, well, come on, I'm going to say that it has a good amount of phaser turrets. It's not clear exactly how many and where they're positioned, though. And there probably are some that can fire aft. And these phasers would usually outpower and outrange the Klingon disruptors, although not nearly as great as the phasers after the Enterprise refit, of course. The Katinga's torpedoes seem to be able to fire in volleys of three fairly easily, perhaps at a slower rate of fire than the Constitution class. The torpedoes are big and bright things, and they honestly look more powerful and intimidating than any torpedoes we've seen in the original series, but comparable to the more modern torpedoes, we would see fired by Federation ships in the original movie era. These torpedoes may fire at a lower rate, but with a torpedo that packs a more powerful punch would be quite suitable for a ship with a cloaking device. A cloaky ship is best used for ambush, and you want to be able to unleash a lot of damage over a short period of time. So all that being said, this could be a fairly interesting matchup. So let's set this up, shall we? The Klingons want to test their new warship against a Constitution-class cruiser and finally establish a sense of superiority, however they do not want to start a full-fledged war. They will have to lure the target ship, let's say in this case the USS Hood, to a location where subspace communications can be disrupted, but they must also set up an enticing reason to bring the Hood to the Klingons. A celestial phenomenon that might disrupt subspace communications so that the Hood will not be able to get a signal off the Starfleet might be, say, a very fast-spinning neutron star or pulsar. All the cyclotron radiation and gravitational distortions would wreak havoc with communications. Let's say there is a science station near the pulsar doing some studies and a freighter comes to supply it about once a month. But so far, two freighters have gone missing and Starfleet Command sends the Hood in to investigate the freighter's disappearances. The Hood follows the route of the freighters and finally finds a debris field. While the Hood investigates, a Klingon ship decloaks from aft and attacks. The Hood is barely able to get its shields up before some shots from the fierce Klingon cruiser's disruptors are able to land some hits on the hull, and the Klingons unleash a full barrage of weapons before they are able to recloak. The aft and starboard shields on the Hood would be severely weakened. Probably at this point, the Klingon commander would be mildly disappointed that the ambush did not severely damage the hood or disable it outright. The excellent Federation shield response was able to prevent a fatal blow this time. Most Klingon commanders at this point would immediately follow up with another attack, but this one is a little older and more seasoned than most, having been entrusted with the command of a new and advanced warship. He slows the ship down to avoid detection and plans his next attack. Meanwhile, the Hood is picking up the pieces and shocked by the Klingons, who are effectively using a cloaking device. They immediately begin tight beam scans and go to battle stations. And they get a few false positives from the sensors and fire phasers, but score no hits. They divert power to shields, but anticipating another attack from behind, they pull power from the forward shields and slow down to low impulse. And they keep the phasers and maneuvering thrusters hot while doing continuous sensor sweeps. The Klingon commander notices the hood slowing and realizes they've diverted power to weapons and shields and they've sort of turtled up, so to speak. It's all they can do. He knows they are expecting another attack, probably from behind. So the Klingon commander takes a risk and will do no such thing. He follows an erratic and evasive parallel course until he can reach a position forward of the hood. But the maneuver strains the effectiveness of the cloaking device and the hood is able to get a ping on them right as they settle in position forward of the hood. The hood fires and is able to get a few hits, which damages disruptor fire control, but the Katinga continues the attack anyway. The disruptors do not hit as effectively as they should, but torpedoes are unleashed by both ships at virtually the same time, and both ships go evasive. The Katinga is a slightly more nimble ship and is able to evade one torpedo, but takes a hit from another while the Hood takes several torpedo hits from the front without being able to evade. At this point, the Katinga's sensitive cloaking device is inoperative, disruptors are not hitting very well, and there is a drop in power. The Hood, however, suffers severe damage to its torpedo launchers, and forward shields have failed, with heavy hull damage to multiple decks. 
She still has some power, but another attack like that and she's finished. The Klingon ship's fire control damage is a temporary issue, but time needs to be taken to get these back online because the Klingon commander now realizes that he will need all his weapons firing effectively to finish off the hood. The Katinga flies away to buy time and launches a torpedo as a kind of party gift. He'd be right back. Meanwhile, the hood fires a few phaser shots at the Katinga as it flies away, but now that the cloak is not taking up all the power, the Katinga has some shields up, so the damage is not significant. However, the hood has the range and accuracy advantage here. They trade long range shots for a time, but it soon becomes apparent that in this position, the hood's phasers would eventually get through the shields and severely damage the Katinga. The Klingon commander threatens to kill the officer in charge of the damage control team, which manages to get the fire control issue fixed just as the Katinga shields fall to severely low levels. The Klingons still have the weapons advantage to the front. They divert more power to impulse engines and weapons and deliberately weaken all but the forward shields capitalizing on maneuverability. They once again are able to position themselves ahead of the hood. Both ships unleash all they have and now finally the Katinga is getting good hits with its disruptors and even with many sparks and fires flying around the bridge, the Klingons continue to beat the hood down. The Katinga flies over and finishes the hood with an aft torpedo shot. Now, the Klingons want there to be a bit of plausible deniability, as they're not trying to start a war, but establish the superiority of this ship. That is one reason I've decided in this scenario to make the disruptors red rather than green. For one, I think red disruptors from a Klingon ship are kind of cool. For two, they are tuned to mimic the damage profile of any generic disruptor or even a phaser. The Klingons would return home triumphant. A follow-up investigation would ensue, and although the Federation definitely suspects the Klingons were responsible for the Hood's destruction, they cannot prove it. And this leads to an acceleration of the refit program for the Enterprise. Well, thank you so much for watching, Space Friends. Please give this video a like, subscribe, and comment for the algorithm. Tell me if you agree how I've laid out this scenario. I'm sure some of you ship lore nuts could offer some great insights. I also want to thank new patrons at patreon.com slash resurrected, Rayan Andaleo and Kirk A. I really appreciate you Patreon supporters. I don't quite have enough yet on Patreon, but it's often hard to rely on YouTube ad revenue alone. But you can get this Constitution class ship model there on Patreon, along with some other things. You can also get them at my CG Trader account, which will be linked in the description below. And when I have time, I'll put this Katinga up there as well. Until next time, space friends.